Okay. What's the plan? You're gonna send me back to July 15th, 1969. No, that's why you get to wear the black suit. We have uh, the chance of time jump. So what does Men in Black look like in 2012? What did it look like in 1969? From a story point of view, it's a very gnarly set of problems you have to solve. It's a period movie sandwiched in the Men in Black envelope. <laughs> yeah, 19, 1969 is uh, very, very different for Agent J. It wasn't the best time for your people. I'm just saying. Who was that? Double A? Your partner. This particular Men in Black is so much fun because we can represent 2012, which is an updating of the past two movies and giving them new weapons, new devices, new everything. But we also get to go back and treat the 69 portion of the movie in this great retro way. Looks like we have ourselves a standoff. Two thirds of our movie takes place back in 69. You know, one of the things that's fun is sort of the steampunk retro era of what futuristic stuff would have looked like. 1969 gives you a huge, deep, vast mine of inspiration to generate the props, the sets, the weapons, the vehicles. Bo just creates a beautiful world. It looks real, it reminds you of the real world, but it's not. It's more fascinating. I think people are gonna be uh, completely surprised and shocked by the recreation of that era. Man, I am getting too old for this. I can only imagine how you feel. It's been 10 years, and we thought, let's have some fun and let's design two different Men in Black headquarters. And let's decide that there was a changing aesthetic. So this is the 2012 headquarters is sort of a more stark, white, gray and black environment. In bringing the Men in Black headquarters deeper into the 21st century, I wanted to have a clean, modern look. Because all of the aliens and the agents look better in a well-lit, clean and crisp environment. But moreover, there's, there's also a slight modern, futuristic, sterile quality that we don't have in the rest of the world that I find refreshing. We made a conscious effort not to see any paper, for instance. The files are passed by, you know, media cards and flash drives and whatever. So very austere, very beautiful. We use the computer to manipulate shapes that result in, you know, pieces like this. It's not built out of wood, it's built out of fiberglass, and there's not a straight wall in Men in Black headquarters. It's just all curves and obscure shapes. Now we're looking at the Men in Black headquarters 1969. It took three months to remodel that. We started with basically the same architectural shell, and then we changed basically every square inch of the surface. But we incorporated a lot of the same basic elements so that you would feel that you're still in the Men in Black headquarters. Also, I took the license of tweaking the black towards a little bit of brown, and they have one other color introduced, which is orange, because orange, to me, just screams 1969. One of the key differences is the technology. We went the opposite direction where we had carbon paper and the computers were spitting out computer punch cards and we just tried to play on the fact that it was really older, older technology even though it was state of the art at the time. Bo Welch ripped this thing. You know, I walked into that 1969 headquarters and it's just magic. Where'd you get the car? And the suit. I stole them both. A uh, car from your wife, suit from your grandmother. We always felt that Men in Black is sort of above and beyond style. It's why their suits always look the same. Once you've seen an alien, you're gonna tell me that wide ties are in style and skinny ties are out? Please, I know the world is bigger than that. You know what the difference is between you and me? I make this look good. You can't beat the black suit. It is such powerful, iconic imagery. You know, and you throw the black suit on and it's like you just melt into the mental space of a man in black. It's just cool. That Sterren likes that suit of yours, hmm? What, it's a crime to wear a black suit? Barry wanted to see some kind of a difference when Will went back to 1969 that he and Josh 
would look slightly different. With Will, we wanted to do something a little looser, a little sexier than he has had before, just to help to show the contrast. Josh is a little boxier, but he's not boxy to the point where he doesn't look good, but it's still a very square shoulder and a little more buttoned down, which is more 60s than we ever did before. When I put on the suit, it's the most surreal feeling in the world. It's like a kid putting on a Superman suit. So you're going to be late for your meeting with the Viagrans. They have a revolutionary new pill. It's decided that the girls would be much sexier and more eye candy in the 60s than they were in 2012. But we were still going to go with a uniform. So I did a very simple, classic black dress that looked good on all the girls. So there's definitely a difference between the men and the women in 1969, where in 2012, they are more visually similar. I won those at Coney Island on the ring toss. I want a stuffed bear once, but never one of these. For 2012, as our technology always does, it, it got smaller and cleaner. For 1969, it got large and clunky. What's interesting is some of the devices in 69 seem to be even more futuristic than what we have in 212. If you stay too far ahead of your time, then you haven't capitalized on the joy and fun of time travel. So the decision was they're slightly ahead. Don't put that up to your head. My favorite thing being is the size of cell phones back then. Have a look at this for me, please. Would you stop that? What? Th that thing is going to give a brain cancer or something. We all remember the iconic Neuralizer from the last two movies, which was a small handheld device that popped up and made a flash. It's very sleek and diminutive. That's a big-ass Neuralizer. Back in 1969, the Neuralizer was about the size of a cement mixer. Basically, it's the same shape, but 100 times larger and powered by tubes. And the inspiration was an MRI machine that you get fed into and spit out the other side. Don't put me in here, Kay. Laid off. That's one of the things that we tried to do in 1969 was make things big and cumbersome and funny. When I get into the design of the weapons, I'm not designing things to be humorous. Uh, I have to put myself in Men in Black in 1969 and say, what would it really be like? So none of it's ever for laughs. It just happens to be, <laughs> happens to be funny. Series four, de-atomizer. That's what I'm talking about. Noisy cricket. So we'd go back to Men in Black one and two and basically any weapon that was there now had to be designed for 2012 and for 1969. So that, that's the design challenge. We made some really beautiful, very powerful weapons for 2012 that are very sleek and great next generation guns. And then we made some based on tube technology weapons that are the standard issue for Men in Black in 1969. And they're very funny. I mean, it looks like a tube TV combined with a gun. Men in Black cars uh, always been kind of cool. In 1969, it's a Ford Galaxy, which is not only an iconographic look, but anything called the Galaxy seems like it belongs in our movie. It's a beautiful car. And we went with the two-door version because it's more beautiful than the four-door. Its tail, everything about it evokes space travel. He has a trunk device in his car, similar to the first Men in Black, where he can press a button and his arsenal of weapons comes up. That's what I'm talking about. And uh, his car also has a mechanism in it that raises and allows monobikes to be dispensed from underneath it. You have these in the future? No. Monocycles are single-wheeled vehicles with a seat in the center. We fabricated a really cool gyroscopic one-wheeled vehicle. These creations that Doug Harlocker came up with are so beautiful. I mean, they're like art pieces that these guys ride. What was shocking is that Bo showed us this early photograph of a monocycle. There actually have been uh, monocycles designed and manufactured 
back in almost the turn of the century. But all of them are plagued by practical problems. Be better with four wheels. Two is like my minimum. They don't really work that well. <laughs> so the men in black designed this monocycle. It, it's great, it's very agile. It can go through narrow spaces. And like everything else in their world, you know, they, they have unlimited resources, so when they make a monocycle, it's going to be beautiful, and you'll want one. Bo's fantastic. We have a lot of fun together, and he designs great sets, great vehicles. Everything he does is brilliant. I love this franchise because of the underlying concept. It's a springboard for my imagination. Bo Welch has been able to, over and over and over again, create that you know quintessential Men in Black look and feeling. And I'm just happy to be on his team. Who wants to go in? <laughs> Remember, you raised first. So.